Now this is my review of the Butlins Adult Soul Weekender compared to the Butlins Adult to the 90s Reloaded. Okay, now I've been to both weekenders and I've been asked a number of times, what are these weekenders like? So I've decided to do a video review. Now, I'm going to start off with reviewing the Soul Weekender and with both the Soul Weekender and the 90s Reloaded, I'm only going to be uh, talking about the observations I have made and my experience. I don't believe that my opinion is needed in this video. So, right, with the Soul Weekender, due to the age group, you find that the DJs, they concentrate, they concentrate on a limited time period. They tend to concentrate on the late 70s up to the early 80s, around that sort of ballpark. This is due to the age group that tends to attend the Soul Weekender. Um, I have to give a warning for those of you who uh, are hardcore, old school, funky clubbers from back in the day, because as you know, um, there's a there's an underground scene and you've got a mainstream scene. So most because because most of the people that goes to the Butlins weekenders, I would call them a mainstream crowd. Now this is I'm not being derogatory when I say this. This is just a statement of fact. That crowd would not be familiar with your hardcore underground club where trends and uh, fashions begin. So for example, if you was living in London in the late 70s, early 80s, and you're a hardcore funky clubber, you'd be going to place like Crackers, 100 Clubs, Electric Ballroom. You'd be you'd be one of the cats who was dropping some serious moves on a dance floor, like from spinning your knees to spinning in your back and stuff like that. Whereas um, the Butlin Soul Weekender is very conservative, very shirt and heels, and um, very nice soul music, excuse my other phone going off. So they wouldn't be familiar with dirty, funky tracks like um, More Bounce to the Ounce by Roger Trapman, One Way, uh, Mr. Groove by One Way, or any Parliament Funk or any sort of hard, um, obscure James Brown beat. They'll be familiar with the commercial James Brown beat as such, but, you know, the real hard, funky track from the day. They wouldn't be familiar with that. So you'd get your, sort, your nice... Um, your nice, polite soul music. Um, one thing that I'd say, I mean, when I say one thing that is really good, I'm not saying everything else is bad about that because, you know, I, I still enjoy the, the, the weekends because I can put my silly hat on. That's another thing I was going to add before I was, before I was going to make my next point. The vibe is silly. You, you don't go there as a serious, hardcore clubber or as such. Um, and if you do, you'd be disappointed. So the vibe is, um, let's be silly for the weekend, leave our problems at the door and let's dress in fancy dress and just have a laugh. That's the vibe. So you go there, you go there with your silly hat on. Okay. Now let, let me move on to the, the final point I want to make. The thing that I find that's really good about the soul, um, weekender is because it's soul music and soul music is um, inclusive music it invites everybody hence the, the, the saying one nation under a groove the chances of running into a closet racist is virtually impossible you got the people are much more friendlier definitely because of the fact that it's soul music and they the, the people who'd, who'd be going to soul music back in the day would naturally be mixing with lots of different other people. Uh, they would be familiar with a multicultural vibe. So that 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 is what separates it from the other the other weekenders. Okay, I'll I'll see you in the next clip. Okay, now with the nineties reloaded, crowd numbers higher, a lot higher, atmosphere a lot livelier. Now once again I need to address the hardcore clubbers from back in the day. Let's use London for an example. If you were going to places like Cookies and Cream, Twice as Nice, um, the Complex in Islington, now you won't be totally disappointed, but you may find the music a, a tad on the tame side, but you got to remember, I, I keep driving this, 
the DJs have to play to a mostly mainstream audience. So they can't go too heavy, they can't go too deep, they can't be dropping too much Todd Edwards, too much Masters artworks because the crowd is going to be completely lost. You know, if, if you were listening to uh, pirate stations such as Girls FM, Freak FM and stuff like that, they can't they can't whack their crowd too heavy. They've got to keep more on the mainstream side of the 90s. However, it, it's not a total loss because DJs such as Trevor Nelson, Tim Westwood, get the balance about right. You know, um, they will drop some, some classics for the dance floor um, troopers. And they keep it mainstream enough, not 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 too so, uh, cheesy, but they keep it mainstream enough for the the most of the pe people to relate to. So they keep the balance just about right. But if there is a little trick, if you, for example, you get into one of the rooms quite early, right? That's when they that's when they drop the best tunes. And if you go to that bar, bar Rosso. Um, in the afternoon, again, you know, there will be some. Sometimes they could they'll, they'll could drop some heavy, some heavy classics. So um, don't write and don't write Butlins completely off. Like you know, you you still may hear. Um, don't forget a thing about a new Jack Swing. You may still catch a bit of um, uh, I don't know, say a, a bit of Todd Edwards here and there. So it's not a complete, it's not a complete write off. Okay, now. I'm going to go into a subject that some people may feel uncomfortable with, but um, this is just my observation and what I have experienced. Now, the only drawback I would say with uh, 90s Reloaded, and it only applies to mon a minority of people. Majority of people are nice. The majority of people are friendly. That's the majority. So, But I'm still going to highlight some of the minority that is there so for the benefit of those people who's going to get picky with me and what words I used like when I use the word closet racist all right the word racist now I'm aware that you can you can have a black racist an Asian racist and a white racist when I use the word racist I don't mean in the terms of who's got the power and who could oppress someone no I don't mean it in that mean I simply mean it in the terms of uh, a person that has a dislike for someone because of the colour of their skin or the culture they come from. Just in that contents, I mean it. That's the only contents I mean the word racist. So I'm, I'm only saying that for those who want to get picky and say, oh, a black person can't be racist because they're not in a position of power. No, that's so I'm clear. Right. So, um... In the contents that we're talking about who is the majority, the majority of people who go to Butlins are white. So, excuse, excuse that. So when I say closet racist, I have to, um, sadly, I have to um, draw my attention towards the majority, which is white folks. So again, I have to, I have, I have to really emphasize this. Um, the closet racists make up the minority of people there. Make up the minority. So why why am I bringing this up? Because um, a closet racist is a person who gets down to black music as long as there's a white face representing it. I.e. like your your boy band or like I.e. Um, Villain of Ice, um, Marky Mark, for example, back in the day when... Um, I think Marky Mark, I think his name was, um, he was doing a concert and the, the girls were screaming for him and everything. And uh, he was he was asked what music and he goes, I'm into hip hop. And the crowd started cheering. I thought, well, you, you guys, you, people who are cheering, you're fake because you're not into hip hop. You're into him. You're not, if if at the back in that time, Buster Rhymes Big Daddy Kane, um, Heavy D was on stage, and they said it were they wouldn't be cheering for him because it's same like with Vanilla Vanilla Ice. The only reason why a load of people rushed to the dance floor when Vanilla uh, do 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 
do do do do do do do do if Vanilla Ice was a bro, they wouldn't be rushing on a dance floor. I'm talking about the closet racist. Same same situation when I was doing a, a performance once I work as a pro, a pro dancer, if you don't know, and one of the tunes I was playing, um, I was playing the original to Rock DJ by Robbie Williams. A lot of people don't know that um, Rock DJ is a sample of a Barry Wright record. So at the very beginning we're starting, um, the crowd was clapping. Yeah, they were clapping to the tune. And once Barry White's um, dulcet tones uh, came across, start singing, they stopped clapping because they realized, hey, it's not Robbie Williams. Again, this is where, where I refer to the closet racists um, who like black music, as long as there's a white face um, um, representing it. Now, what rev re what relevance does this have to to um, to um, Bogner? Right. So, my um, my white friends, who I go there with, if they would go up to a group of say they go up to a group of girls, and this is something I I would I've, I would notice. Now, the closet racist type, they would only acknowledge them, or or say my friend Kevin. They would only they would focus their attention, they focus their their conversation on him. Even though I'm standing right next to him, I I don't exist. So um, they're only talking to him. And the next time he comes across the same group of people, they'd only say hello to him. Whereas with the majority of people, the majority of people who are, are not closet racist, um, when we go on to, when he goes to talk to them, they talk to the two of us. When they see us again, they say hello to the both of us. I put this down to, the, the, when it comes to the closet racist, this is the difference between the 90s Reloaded and the Soul Weekender. Um, you got some people who are not used to mixing outside of their own environment so i example um it attracts a lot of people say if we let's use the location bogner regis bogner regis attracts a lot of people from kent and essex sadly amongst a lot of black people uh, kent and essex is known for the home for a lot of closet racists so it's kind of no surprise that uh, people from essex and kent uh, I'm not used to mixing with people other from white people. So they're not comfortable being around uh, people of colour or whatever. And it shows in their actions. So that's the only drawback, I would say, with the 90s Reloaded. But I have to have to say, fortunately, those people are the minority. They exist. They're there. They're the, they're, but they're the minority. My friend Kevin... He, he he wouldn't notice because he's white. He's he hasn't been on the receiving end of racism. He wouldn't know what to look out for. He wouldn't know that he wouldn't know the body language to, to look out for. It'd be just just go past him. But if you're a person of color, you would recognize the vibes. You would you you would you would know that the um you would know the expressions and the body language when you come across it. So that's that. Um, this is not an opinion. This is a matter of fact, and it's something that I've observed. I'm not trying to stir up any trouble, make anybody feel bad. This is, I'm just stating what is there. But I'm happy to point out, again, I've got to ready drive this. They are the minority. They, they don't make up the majority. Okay? So thank you very much. That's my review of um, Butlin's Adult Weekender. Uh, so Weekender and uh, 90s Reloaded. Next time I'll do a review on the 80s. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Okay, bye.